This is Burkina Faso. Welcome to Open Tierra. Today we're diving into the wonders of Burkina Faso. Did you know this country boasts over 60 ethnic groups, each contributing to its vibrant cultural mosaic? This diversity shapes everything from traditions to artistic expressions. But here's a tantalizing tidbit. There's a fascinating historical figure whose legacy still resonates today. Join us and stay to the end to uncover this intriguing piece of Burkina Faso's past. Burkina Faso can be divided into three main land zones. The southwestern parts are more forested and fertile farming areas. The central plateau is covered by savanna and brush. And the northern Sahel area is dry, arid desert. The country also contains a few wildlife reserves like the Ali and Singo reserves. While not located near the coast, Burkina Faso has two primary river networks running through its terrain. These are the Red Volta and White Volta rivers, which converge and ultimately flow into the famous Volta River in Ghana. And there are a few small lakes like Tingrila and Bam lakes scattered about. The capital city is Ouagadougou, centrally located and populated by over two million diverse inhabitants. Bobo Dioulasso, Burkina's second city in the west, is known for its cultural landmarks and crafts. Kudugu in central Burkina Faso is an important economic hub. The early history of Burkina Faso was characterized by a series of powerful kingdoms rising to prominence in the region. These included kingdoms like Wagadu and the Mossi kingdoms, which came to dominate the central and western areas of what is now Burkina Faso. These kingdoms gained wealth via trans-Saharan trade and operated for centuries. With the Mossi kingdoms holding regional power well into the 1800s before being taken over by outside forces. In the late 19th century, French forces moved into the territories making up modern Burkina Faso and by 1896 had established their rule as a French colony, originally named Upper Volta. The area was administered as part of French West Africa. The French colonial government often relied on forced labor to build infrastructure. This caused some resentment among the local population in some cases, local groups rebelled against French control, but these were usually put down by better armed French forces. The colonial era lasted for over half a century until 1958. After World War II, France began granting more autonomy to colonies in West Africa. Finally, on August 5, 1960, Upper Volta gained full independence from France. Early leaders had mixed records running the government from the 1960s through the early 1980s. Rule was marked by unrest, charges of corruption and periodic military coup d'etat, toppling one leadership figure for another. In 1983, a remarkable new leader named Thomas Sankara took power in a populist coup. Sankara adopted radical left-wing policies and sought to reduce government corruption and international aid. He was a revolutionary figure who developed a strong grassroots following. He changed the name to Burkina Faso, which means land of the honest men. Sadly, Sankara's time in power was cut short when he was killed in a coup d'etat, led by one of his former colleagues, Blaise Compaoré. But Sankara remains a cultural icon for his revolutionary vision and continues to have symbolic influence in Burkina Faso today. Hope you enjoyed this very brief history of the land of honest men. Let me know in the comments what other aspects of this country's history you'd be curious to learn about. The World Bank estimates that Burkina Faso has a population of about 22 million as of 2022 estimates. There are actually over 60 different ethnic groups among the diversity of Burkina Bay people. The Mossi ethnic group accounts for almost half the population, making them the predominant ethnic identity. 
Other major groups include the Fula, Gourmanche, Bobo and Senufo ethnicities. When it comes to religion, around 60% of Burkina Faso practices Islam, primarily in large cities. About 25% follow indigenous animist religions common to many African cultures. And 15% identify as Roman Catholic Christians, more centered in rural small villages and towns. While French is used officially in schools, trade and by the government, Almost 90 native dialects are still spoken by the Burkina Bay. Mossi, Fula and Diola are widely used African languages. But in remote towns, indigenous tongues and local dialects persist in cultural traditions. Agriculture employs around 80% of Burkina Faso's workforce, making it the largest sector of the economy. Cotton is the most important cash crop and food crops like sorghum, millet, maize, peanuts and rice are also grown. Livestock raising is another key agricultural activity. Gold exports have grown in recent years too, with mining now making up a significant portion of exports. Probably the biggest barrier blocking further economic development is poor infrastructure. Burkina Faso is landlocked and accessibility is limited by inadequate roads, railways and communications networks. Only about a fifth of roads are actually paved. This makes transporting goods difficult and limits connectivity between rural towns and cities. Burkina Bay cuisine is a delightful blend of traditional African ingredients and cooking techniques that have been passed down through generations. At the heart of Burkina Faso's cuisine are staples like millet, sorghum, maize and peanuts. These ingredients form the base of many dishes, reflecting the country's agricultural richness. The markets here are a vibrant hub of activity, offering a dazzling array of spices, fresh fruits and vegetables that play a crucial role in Burkinabe cooking. One of Burkina Faso's signature dishes is rizgras, a flavorful rice dish cooked with tomatoes, onions and a variety of spices, often served with meat or fish. It's a true reflection of the country's culinary heritage. Mealtime in Burkina Faso is a cherished tradition, often bringing families and communities together. Sharing a meal is not just about food, it's a celebration of culture and togetherness. From poulet bicyclette, a chicken dish cooked with local herbs and spices, to fufu, a starchy side dish, Burkina Faso offers a diverse range of flavors and textures. Street food culture is vibrant here, with brochettes being a popular choice. These skewered meats, often marinated and grilled over open flames, are a delicious and convenient snack enjoyed by locals and visitors alike. Food is deeply intertwined with Burkina Faso's cultural festivities and rituals. Whether it's a wedding, a festival or a religious ceremony, traditional dishes take center stage, adding flavor to the celebrations. This West African country is home to over 60 ethnic groups, including the Mossi, Bobo, Senufo, Lobi and Fulani, each group has their own distinct artistic traditions that they infuse into masks, bronze castings, woodwork and woven goods. Let's start with the iconic Burkina Bay mask, ceremonies and dances. These are performed for important social events, funerals or just bringing the community together. Masks signify spirits and different characters. During masquerade dances and rituals, performers wear masks and costumes while dancing to pulsating drums and balafon, a wooden xylophone instrument. The ceremonies tell stories passed down through generations and offer moral lessons. Beyond masks, craftwork in Burkina Faso uses local natural materials beautifully. Famed bronze casting was developed by the Bibua, Bogra, Mossi and Leila people. Casters use the lost wax method to handcraft figurines, statues and functional items. 
wood carving is also admired for its intricate details, showcasing animals and cultural symbols seen in furniture, statuettes and utensils. And woven fibers from plants are made into vibrantly patterned blankets, mats, baskets and clothing, representing nature and geometry. I hope you enjoyed this glimpse into the captivating community-centered world of Burkina Bay ceremonial dances and craftwork. Let me know in the comments what aspect you find most interesting about art and culture in Burkina Faso. If you enjoyed this video on Burkina Faso, you'll love this next one.